Welcome to EMEO CI Learning Zones. I'm Jose Palmeiro, and my mission is to simplify the onboarding and running of OCI. In the next minutes, we'll cover Learning Zones impact, which mean early production and value, how to make that impact happen in days and weeks and not months, and where do you start? So Learning Zones, the best definition is airports. Our objective is to land airplanes with security and scalability and land them on their right designated areas, like domestic terminals, international terminals, terminals, each with their own security posture. But we can only reach scale with shared resources. Otherwise, we have an airport for each terminal, and that is not scale. It's also very intuitive to understand what we don't want. Landing the first or dumping the first is okay, the second and third onwards, you're going to rework, and this rework will start to increase. This is not scalable. So OCI landing zones are just like airports. They are secure and scalable. Let me share some observations we see with our customers that have landing zones and they don't have landing zones. So you can expect the OCI resources to be highly segregated and secured in terms of identity and assets management and also network. OCI landing zones give you this by design. Without a landing zone, normally we see everything in the same place or a lot of resources sharing other resources that they should not share. Or even worse, like one admin responsible for it all. With a landing zone, you can scale through your organization, teams, platforms, and projects. Without a landing zone, it was not designed to scale, so it will be harder. What we normally see is poor network granularity, which means bad network design. With the landing zone, you can expect your workloads to land on OCI on their designated areas. Without the landing zone, we saw it, you start reworking and reworking. With the landing zone, it brings the operational clarity because who does what gets tackled on day one. That's the first area of the landing zones set up its security. Normally without the landing zone, these topics of who is responsible for what gets postponed near to implementation. And then that means rework. You will redesign again. This means late value. By using our best practices in with the infrastructure as code configurations, 100% declarative, you will lower your TCO and your implementation efforts because you're not be coding and coding and reinventing the wheel. And that's what we see in customers that without a landing zone, they operate by changing code and that's highly inefficient. With a landing zone, you can, it can be expandable. You can have that capability. So new building blocks can be added just like airports will grow. Without a landing zone, what we see is that our customers will eventually end up in a landing zone. So it's not about how or what, it's about when. The sooner the better because it will reduce your efforts. Your, the later it comes, the might your efforts will most probably increase. Now notice also that a late landing zone is better than no landing zone. You can expect to lower your onboarding efforts with a landing zone. Scalability and security by design will enable you earlier production. You'll be comfortable in having those workloads on, on production. You also have clear operations, provisioning and changing. You know how to do it. And that all means earlier business value. Now, how to make this happen in days and weeks and not months? There's two approaches. There's standard landing zones, the existing blueprints, public form of best practices. And then there's standard landing zones, designed specific for some requirements. For the first one, we have three models available. The model one, it's like different sizes, like a menu. Model one is the CIS landing zone. One organization unit is designed for. One tenancy. A small workload footprint can land here. It's a landing zone designed by architectural layers. It's ideal for CI exploration, POCs, and production. All models are production ready. Now, most of the times, model one is not enough. That's why we have the operating entities landing zone. 
is designed to hold multiple organization units, subsidiaries, departments, opcos, lines of business, ISVs, even managed services for some specific workloads. There are segregation of identity and, and access management in a lot of levels that allow you to do this. It is designed for one tenancy and can hold up a large workload footprint. Now, when model two is not enough, we have the multi-tenancy learning zone. It is designed for several organizations and their organization units can hold all the subsidiaries, also operating companies, also managed services. But the difference is this is done in several tenancies. So this is the highest level of segregation and it can hold the largest workload footprint. When this model is not enough, you can have your own model and tailor your learning zone. And we'll see how. You can adopt and tailor from model one, two, three, or you can tailor from AWS, GCP, and Azure, and that will be ready for any workload and any footprint, any operating model. So this is the menu, three sizes or your size. Now, how do you create a feature proof of CI. That means a well designed Linux. And it needs to cover network security and operation. The runtime, which is the implementation, it's also crucial. Just that's your daily, daily efforts afterwards. So if you ask us, what are the resources I have to take into account for a well designed Linux zone? This is it. You start with security, then you move to network. And then with operations, you bring the visibility on those resources and you connect all the dots on who does what and how. Your cloud ops team, which will be mapped to identity and access management. With all of this, your implementation, if you use the configurable approach, it will be drastically small. This is how you reduce your efforts. Now we recommend you to create your design from our blueprints. It will take you days. You don't start with a white empty canvas. Start with the existing blueprints full of best practices. As you can see in this diagram, with compartment structure, shared elements, dedicated elements, network elements. So you have everything that you can use to tailor your lens. Now there's one more area that, uh, that is important and can help you reduce your time to production. These are the workload extensions. It's a concept we introduced on the last fiscal, and there are self-contained designs and solutions that can be pluggable to any learning zone, standard or tailor, it doesn't matter. So they're self-contained, they contain all the design and all the infrastructure was configured ready to run. They don't deploy the VMs and the databases, but all the network, the groups, the policies are set up for you. So it's really plug and play. What you just have to do is set up your VMs and databases. There's the EBS example. It's public in Git, so you can take a look. It's ready to run. There's more OKEs, XSCS, OCVS, and more will come. Now, this is a complete design approach with standard landing zones, standard landing zones, and workload extensions. This works for all our customers, no matter the size, on all the CI flavors. Now, we also know that design is great, but it's not enough to have the impact we want. That's why we created an infrastructure approach available to reduce time and efforts on implementation time and day two. For this to happen, there's two principles. The first one is that all learning zones are declarative configurations and not code. And there's one common Terraform engine for all the learning zones. Let's see how this all works in one diagram from design, implementation, and running. So recapping the design, there are standard landing zones and there are the three models. They have their own configurations. Their infrastructure as code declarations are done in JSON or YAML. You can create your tailored landing zones from the existing designs of the standard models, and you can create the implementation from also those configuration files. It will take you hours to set up your new landing zone or days if you're doing the first, but it's very, very small. Also, the workload extensions follow exactly the same practice. Now notice this green layer. This is the implementation. 
human readable files. Get your own version. And you can run run with your automation engine or IT tool that will set up these um, configurations against the generic Terraform modules. There is one set of Terraform modules, silent generic. And it's public for you. These elements are going to be responsible to translate your config into OCR resources. So our strategy in a nutshell is simple as this. There are standard learning zones to help you with reference models, best practices. There's the Taylor learning zones you can do to fine tune design practice. You can take the models on the left or your existing practices and cover the resources we mentioned on that order. There's also work mode extensions, which are one step, brings you one step in your production. And then there's the green layer, which is everything is declarative, configured, versionable, and human readable. Having those elements in Git makes it auditable by design. Everyone knows who did what and when. This is great for cloud ops, mm. and it's also easy for cloud ops to understand and operate. Cloud ops will not use touch the modules, the yellow, one set of modules for all configurations. Those are going to be responsible for the developers. So the developers do not touch the green layer configurations and operations do not touch the yellow layer code. This is operational security at its best. Now, as takeaways or summary, we recommend you to start with OCI standard models. They're full of best practices. They also help you to enable your skills. They have core and design views. It's the best way to learn, not a siloed approach. Tailor your new designs based on standard models can go really fast. Mirror also your existing practices if you have them, targeting one operating model. That will decrease your TCO overall in the cloud. Declare your infrastructure's code and do not code it. Keep focused on your configs. They are easily changed by cloud ops. And decouple the learning zone building blocks. Decoupling is key because as you grow in size, you can expect production to be whole, a change in production to be stopped because you're having some terraform planning or, or applying on UAT. You have to decouple your areas. That's how it gets scalable. No monoliths from size M on. So where do you start? The entry point is Remea Technology Engineering GitHub. Follow this link. It will contain what I've just commented. Or reach out to me directly or contact any of our account cloud engineers. Thank you so much and see you soon.